Hello and welcome to Top 10 Ways to Use CES Edupack. My name's Hannah Amelia and I'm the Product Manager for CES Edupack at Granta Design. In this presentation, I will go over an introduction to CES Edupack. We'll look at three ways that you can use it for introductory teaching. Then we'll look at some new databases and we'll finish off by looking at advanced features and where to find out more. CES EduPack is used across many different disciplines, anywhere where materials is important. It's used throughout all levels of study and it's used around a thousand universities and colleges worldwide. It starts off very simple. For the introductory level courses, there are just 69 materials and 74 processes, the most commonly used materials and processes, so as not to overwhelm the introductory students. At level two, there are more materials and processes and more properties for each of these. And at level three, there are more than 4,000 materials and specific grades so that you can do research projects and design projects. Accompanying CES EduPack, there are teaching and learning resources available on Granta's Education Hub. There are around 350 of these and you can take as much or as little as you want from them. So let's start with the introductory area and classes of materials. You can find out more about this in the lecture units one and two. You can use charts like these to help the students understand the difference between metals and alloys, ceramics, composites, foams, elastomers and polymers, etc. You can see this bubble chart has a log scale on both axes to make sure that we can fit all the data onto one clear slide. You can talk to students about why metals are, have a high Young's modulus or a high density and why polymers are somewhere in the middle. You can talk to them about bonding and packing density and so on. Let's show you that in the software. I'm going to open up level one to start with. And if we want to um, have a look at different materials. You can see here that there are different families of materials which we can open up and explore. For example, here we have the ABS record with a picture, an image of a typical use, a description and various properties. So as we saw in the presentation, you can create charts using CES EduPack. If we choose what to have on the Y axis, we've got Young's modulus. And on the X axis, we have density. Here is that chart that we had before, and I can label the family envelopes, foams, natural materials, metals and alloys, and so on. We can go through and look at a description of that class of materials with images, a composition summary, what their general properties are, typical failure mechanisms, and typical uses. Going now back to the presentation, we're on to tip number two, introducing properties. So there is a labeled chart similar to what we've just seen. And on top of that, I've put pictures from the records. We've chosen specific materials that the students will know from their own life experience brick, cork, gold, Lego, etc. And you can create a chart like this using the custom subsets. 
Here is an idealized version of the records. You can see that there is a description and an image and then some general properties which are stored as a range of values. There are mechanical, thermal, electrical, optical, processability and eco properties. For each of the properties, you can click on the eye icon to find more information in the science notes, where you'll find a definition of the property, how it's measured, and information about the origins of the property. Scrolling down to the bottom of the science note, you'll find references to books where the students can find more information. So let's have a look at that in the software. If we go back to the ABS record and I click on the eye icon here, you can see the science note for Young's modulus with the definition, information about the origins of the property, and references to other books where the students can find out more information. On to tip number three, comparing materials. Here is a simple bar chart of Young's modulus from high to low. We can help the students understand how different classes of materials have relatively different Young's moduli by making the x-axis separated by the different classes of materials. You can see here ceramics and glasses, natural materials, metals and alloys, polymers and elastomers. You can also compare different types of materials. By using a custom subset, you can just highlight the materials that you're interested in. Here we have a comparison between biological materials, including spider silk, and man-made fibres. Let's try and reproduce that in the software. I'm going to change database and go to the bioengineering database. If we want to make a chart, we can choose a custom subset with just the biological materials and the man-made fibres. On this chart, I'm going to use an advanced axis because I'm interested in the specific stiffness and strength. So I'm putting in Young's modulus divided by density on one axis and tensile strength divided by density on the other axis. So we can easily find Kevlar fibre, for example, and label it. And spider silk. On to tip number four. You can find out more about the Material Science and Engineering database in Lecture 6. This database is specifically designed to help the students understand how processes change the structure of materials and that affects the properties. It has information about the elements, materials including biological materials and functional materials, phase diagrams, 
information about mechanisms such as solid solution strengthening and how that affects the properties. And of course, the selection tools as well. Let's focus in on the phase diagrams. These help the students to learn the basics. Firstly, just learning the terminology, such as the eutectic point, then understanding the lever rule, looking at the phases that are present in different phase fields, understanding how microstructure develops along a cooling path. And finally, there is a bank of phase diagrams that you can copy and paste into reports. I'm going to change the database to the material science and engineering database. And we're going to have a look at the phase diagrams. In particular, the cooling paths. For the iron carbon phase diagram, we have three different cooling paths available. As we move the cursor down, we can see how the microstructure develops until finally the eutectic appears. The Products, Materials and Processes database is another of our new databases and you can find out more about it in the lecture unit. It focuses in on products and tries to engage the students in materials and processes by starting with an interesting product. You can click on the engaging home page to choose the product that you're interested in. We have a series of different products that show how a product is affected by the material that's used to make it. For example, we have many bikes in the database. You can see through these examples how the material choice affects the processing choice and vice versa, and how that material choice affects the design. This last one here was the first bike made using carbon fibre and you can see that the design is dramatically different. You can also use the information in this database to select materials or to investigate the properties of materials that have been used in products. On a chart like this, towards the top and the left are lighter and stronger materials. And you can see how the different designs fit on this chart. So let's have a look in the database. First, I'm going to change database to the products, materials and processes. Here is that home page and you can look at the products by family type. So for example, here we have the iPhone. Clicking on this classic computer that was lauded for its design in 1998, we can see that it's made out of polycarbonate. We can understand a little bit about its design. and we can go to the materials and processes that we use to make it. So for example, here is the polycarbonate record. In this database, we have aesthetic attributes so that students can understand the tactile properties of a material and connect that with the underlying science. Here we have the science notes explaining how specific heat capacity and thermal conductivity relate to how warm it feels when you touch it. 
Comparing process costs. We have information about the cost of materials. It's displayed as a range of values and it's updated once a year. In the Elements database, as part of the critical material information, we also look at the price volatility of different elements. And there are science notes highlighting issues around price and cost. In the process data table, we also have a cost model to calculate the relative cost index of a process. This helps identify the most economic process depending on the batch size and other parameters such as overhead rate. If we go to the processes table here and look for example at injection moulding I'll scroll down to the process cost model. Here you can see the relative cost index against the batch size. And here it is displayed in numbers, which can be used in a selection. You can see here that you can change the parameters. So for example, you can put in an appropriate overhead rate considering where you are in the world. On to tip number seven, the bigger picture. It's increasingly important to help students understand how technological developments affect stakeholders all over the world. The CES EDUPAC Sustainable Development Database provides information to help them do this. It contains information on materials and processes as usual. It also contains information on the regulations which affect materials and information about the different countries from which materials come. Energy storage and low carbon power are covered, as is power generation in general. Also in the Sustainable Development Edition is an eco audit, a way to quickly, at, in the design stage, evaluate the carbon footprint and energy usage of a product over its whole life cycle. So let's have a look at the Sustainable Development Database. So first, I'll change to the Sustainable Development Database. You can see here the different data tables that are available that I mentioned before. Let's have a look at the nations of the world. We can have a look at the properties of, for example, the United States. As well as some basic information like the flag, a map, how much land area it has. There's also information about people, education, their culture, human rights and governance, and the economy and development health, energy and the environment, and lastly, military ex expenditure. There are links here at the bottom so that you can find out which elements are mined in this, in this country, which regulations they have, and also which materials they produce. The Eco Audit tool is also available in the Sustainable Development Database. And here you can put in a bill of materials of a product, information about how it's transported 
and used. You can also use this database to look at the carbon footprint and energy of a product over its life cycle using the Eco Audit tool. Here you have a ready-made project of a bottle of water with the bottle, the cap and the water, information about how it was made and what will happen to it at the end of life. You can also put in information about how it's transported and used. Here we have a summary chart of the energy used over its life cycle. And students can very quickly change parameters and see what if scenarios. The chart changes immediately. On to tip number eight. Exploring temperature dependence. Temperature dependent properties are very important for the aerospace industry. And the aerospace ed edition uses the data from the MMPDS database. Industry standard design allowable data. The records have temperature dependent properties. You can view the underlying data as a graph and choose the temperature at which you want the data to show. And then you can use it in selections at that elevated temperature. Here we can see a chart of Young's modulus against yield strength at different temperatures. And you can see how the properties change on the changing temperature. Here in the aerospace edition, we have a subset of materials that are called the aerospace materials. And these materials have information from the MMPDS database. So if we go, for example, to a wrought aluminium series 6061 T6, you can see that at this level there are more detailed records with composition information and more properties. Here you can see Young's modulus with temperature currently displayed at room temperature. We could increase this to, for example, 350K. And the value here changes. On to material selection. First, you have to choose what you want to select from. In this case, all materials. You can then use three tools to narrow down your choice. You can use bubble charts or a limit stage where you put in minima and maxima. Or you can narrow down based on what that material is linked to. For example, choosing only materials that can be injection molded. You can have as many of these stages and criteria as you'd like, and then the software ranks the results. Here we have an example for a visor for motorcyclists. It needs to be tough as possible and as cheap as possible. But it has to be transparent and you have to be able to mould it. Let's do that in the software. We're going to choose from all materials at level 2. The first thing I'll do is to narrow down on optical properties. We want something of optical quality. It also has to be injection mouldable. For that, I'll use a tree stage. I'll go and find the injection moulding record. And double click on it. 
And now we're only looking at the 24 records that are linked to that injection molding record. Lastly, I'm interested in looking at the price of the materials and their fracture toughness. We can narrow down on this area here. The grey bubbles are records that haven't passed our criteria. These are the remaining options. And you can see that polycarbonate has a higher fracture toughness and is also the cheapest. And that's why it's used for these purposes. Lastly, tip number 10, new materials. Here we can see areas on the chart where currently we have no materials available. However, it would be great to have materials that were stiffer and lighter. There are two approaches using CES EduPack how you can explore those new materials. The first is to use the synthesizer tool. It has hybrid material models such as sandwich panels and composites where you can calculate the properties of a hypothetical material. Secondly, you're able to add your own records. So if you have data on a material that you've been testing, you can put it into the database and compare it to reference materials. To investigate a hypothetical material, we're going to go to the Synthesizer tool and choose the Sandwich Panel model. We can choose what material is used for the face sheet and the core. The face sheet material is going to be an aluminium, a 6061T4. And the core material is going to be a foam. A rigid PVC foam. We can look at many materials with different face sheet thicknesses and different core thicknesses. We have to decide what support and loading conditions it is under, as this will affect the failure. If we name the face sheet and the core, What it has done is to create these records here for our hypothetical materials. The properties that have been calculated are limited, but are still very useful to compare against other materials that are available and to indicate a good area for future research. CES EduPack can be used alongside many different textbooks, whether that's science-led textbooks like Callister and Askeland, or design-led textbooks, such as those listed here by Professor Mike Ashby. As well as the software, there are also supporting teaching and learning resources, 
and each quarter we hold an inspirational case study session with advanced industrial project case studies given as examples. There are additional databases, as I've shown you, including the PMP database, Products, Materials and Processes, and the Material Science and Engineering database. If you'd like more information, you're able to sign up to our newsletter. We also open up everything that we are working on to try and get some feedback so that we can make it better for your teaching in the future. If you have any questions or you'd like to arrange a meeting to explore CES EDUPAC at your university, please feel free to contact us via email or click here to arrange a demonstration.